Fights, episode 94. Fire, fire. Did you see my Instagram, my Reels video of the volcano at the Mirage? Fire. You, it is a pyro's dream come true. Oh, and then the Hard Rock has bought the Mirage, and I think they're going to take down the volcano and put up one of their giant guitars. We should it, have a go fund. I want to buy it. I know. We could put it in the middle of the desert. People would go just to watch it, right? Uh-huh. Uh, or, or drag it between Tucson and Phoenix where that airplane graveyard is. <laughs> right? Why not? <laughs> Vegas was so much fun. Thank you to all the termites that came to the Mirage. We sold it out, which was great. Not easy in the summertime. Not easy when it's 108 degrees. No. And that's and then, the, like, the room, they all say your rooms are on 65. I think all of Vegas is lying. I think they just said, set it at 65, and, the, and they won't know. Because think of the air conditioning bill. It, the room, I love the Mirage, but the room was a little hot. And uh, it, you, it said 65. I'm like, no way. But I wouldn't pay it either if I was them. You're dumb little pigs, and you chose to come out here when it's 110. You can sit up in your room at 78. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. It's dumb little, dumb little desert pigs. What else did you do? Um... Well, friends, Chuck was the opening act, my friend Chuck, and then his friend CJ came out, so that was super fun. And then I had friends from St. Louis, and I went to a drag brunch with my friend Heidi and Marsha. It was the greatest drag show I've ever seen in my life. Really? Now, mind you, when you start out, like, when I waited tables, this one guy, Ralph, he would go to this gay bar, uh... It was all guys on the east side. They would have drag like Thursdays or whatever. Uh-huh. But it's East St. Louis. Like these were farmers who <laughs> their that their like family didn't know they did this, right. and they would come out dressed and, and they were kind of like stocky, ch- chubby. <laughs> let's just say it. They were fat, and they'd come out and go, "Hi, my name's Bob. I'm a farmer, and tonight." I will be doing Ethel Merman. And then Bob would come back. Bob started like in overalls and stuff. And then Bob comes out and he looks like Ethel Merman. But, you know, he's singing, God bless America. It's not, it was interesting. It just wasn't like super duper fun. No. It was more like a curiosity. This one in Vegas, some because some of these some of these guys are on the RuPaul Drag Race one too. And then there's a whole show over there, which now I want to go to that one too. But this is at 10 a.m. It's a brunch. So you're not even awake in a great way. You get champagne. It's in the table. There's a cooler in the table. And the champagne is, and then as soon as you drink a bottle, if you do it upside down, they bring you another bottle. It's all part of the ticket. Uh Now, if you want the open bar, because I'm like, well, what if I want a beer? (laughs) You got to buy, pay a little extra for Uh that. But no problem. Um, But now I can't remember the name of it. It was at Senior Frogs at Treasure Island, which I hadn't been in there in years. Starring Uh, Chanel. Chanel, I mean, they were, the music they chose, nothing was a downer. Because sometimes they'll do Celine Dion and it just drags the whole thing down if it's a slow song. No slow songs. It was, it was just the most fun. It's just Senior Frogs Drag Brunch. Just Senior Frogs Drag Brunch weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. 10 a.m. And then they had to do the whole show again. And I think, sometimes I complain when I have two shows in a night. I'm like... I'm tired. I didn't even do anything compared to what they do. I mean, I just stand out there and talk. These guys are doing the splits and, oh, yeah. I mean, backflips. There's three dancers with them, these three dudes that were, I don't even understand why they're not, like, dancing with Cher. These guys were so (laughs) awesome. And you're in a club. Like, it's a 250-seat area in Senior Frogs. It was just, it was just. Did you take videos? Spectacular. I did. I'm going to put some up on reels. Now that I've learned reels. Do you guys know about that? Termites? The yeah. Children. The children know. <laughs> the children know everything. <laughs> it's Instagram, but then it's like a video part of Instagram. I don't really fully understand the difference, but I guess eventually you can get paid on reels. But then you have to have like 10,000 followers, 600,000. I Googled it. It's just for fun. I the, There'll be a check somewhere for like $12.82. Right. It's like my checks from Comic Relief. Here's two seventy five from Byron Allen. Thanks, Byron. <laughs> Sometimes they're like 98 cents. I'm like, it took more to mail this and get this shit organized. <laughs> just keep the dollar. I'm good. Just keep it. Um, Are you going to go again? Yes, I would go again. I can't believe those guys had to do it two times. And then some of them go over and do the night show at the RuPaul Drag Race thing. Wow. Yeah. It takes so much work to get ready. I can't even imagine how much work it takes for them to get ready. And then, like, the guy, the MC, he did a solid 20 up front. Uh-huh. Talk crowd work. 
and it, she, I know, she, whatever, I apologize in advance. That uh, <laughs> They, all of them, how about all of them? Because it's true, all of them. But uh, a great MC, yeah. did a great job. Couple lines I've heard before, but it doesn't matter. He, he, she did them right. It was just, it was great. The servers were happy. You know, nobody was an asshole. Everybody was fun. Chelsea. Oh, yeah, Chelsea. They had a girl, and she had to pick up the money. Because there's just money flying everywhere. Dollar bills, $5 bills, $100 bills. I mean, it's everywhere. It's on the floor. It's in, in the air. And poor Chelsea, she's like this young Zoomer. And at one point, one of the drag queens had all this money, right? Like tons of wad of cash. And then she just went... And blew it, and it flew over. And Chelsea just give her an eye roll, like, "Come on, man! <laughs> like, I have a bucket. You could have just put it in the bucket. And now I gotta crawl around senior frogs <laughs> on a filthy ass floor. Um, but that was super fun. Yeah. And then I just, then hung, what'd you do? Um, I hung out. I went downtown. I hadn't been downtown in a long time. My St. Louis friends hadn't been there since it was domed up, which oh, is a wow. long time ago. Mm-hmm. Downtown is great during the day. A lot of free concerts, but after about 11 at night, I my opinion mm-hmm. gets a little sketchy. Yeah. I would scoot on back down to the strip, mm-hmm. but it was we, the daytime. It's great people watching. Uh, there's bars outside. Mm-hmm. Like you don't even have to go in the casinos, but I like to go in the old ones, like Binions and mm-hmm. the historical ones. They're still down there. Did you see the cowboy? I saw the cowboy. Uh huh. Nice. They were gonna tear that down. They were gonna throw it away. I know. I'm like, how can you throw out the most iconic neon sign aside from the one that says welcome to Las Vegas? Yeah. The cowboy one. Like, what the fuck is the matter with sometimes Vegas throws shit out where I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I think they they um destroyed Bugsy Siegel's house. No. That's fame. You can't. Yeah. I. They don't have a lot of respect for history. That's because they want everything to be brand new. Mm-hmm. And I get it. That's what makes Vegas Vegas. But on the other hand... um. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, I got my pancakes at the Mirage. I eat pancakes one time a year, and it's at the pantry at the Mirage. And it's the best pancake I've ever eaten in my life. I don't know why they all kind of taste the same, but no. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. And whole milk. And then everybody makes fun of me when I order milk. What are you, five? I'm like, you know, I didn't say shit when you ordered your iced tea, did I? (laughs) Iced tea? Why why would you take iced tea? (laughs) God. People are anti-milk. Can I have a milk and a beer? Whole milk is what I want, too. (laughs) No, the beer comes after the milk. Um, and then the termites brought some stuff. This is so funny. Okay, so there's this Irish explorer named Tom Crean. Mm-hmm. I had his beer in Dingle. Mm-hmm. Well, these people, this guy was part of the endurance that got caught in the ice, and then he was part of the, he's, he's a badass. Mm-hmm. He died at 61, and I thought, yeah, he was probably exhausted. He'd been to Antarctica like three times. Right. His bar was called the South Pole. Mm-hmm. So now they have a bar in Kenmar. Um, and these termites went, and they brought me back a six-pack, but here's what's funny. They couldn't wait any longer and drank three. <laughs> <laughs> so I got three. I'll take it, though. Um, uh, this microbrewery that they went to in Gimar is named after Tom Crean, an Irishman that was on the ship with the Shackleton. I know all, all that stuff. Um, his granddaughter... And her husband started this small microbrewery in Kenmar, and we had a great time talking with them. And then they put a picture in here, uh, the center, Tom Green's granddaughter. If you've never looked up Tom Green, you should too. I've never. They, he's like as badass as Sir Edmund Hillary. And he's handsome. He's very handsome. Yeah. His picture on the can. I thought he lived to like ninety four. He was only like fifty in that picture. Oh, wow. That's what happens when you don't have sunblock at the South Pole. Right. The center, Tom Green's granddaughter, left her husband, right termite. <laughs> so um this is a delicious un wasn't expecting that treat and then this that i'm drinking out of a time i brought this uh pint glass back a little las vegas souvenir nice. uh-huh. and a christmas ornament and it's from brad jerry elaine and elaine um so i got that and then yeah kind of who worked at the mirage kept bringing things back more termite things i'm like just set them there i'll get to them all um, <laughs> uh, this is a uh, termite Brenda and husband James. Uh, they brought back uh, the whiskey, uh, the peanut butter whiskey, which we opened backstage and it was delicious and drank a lot. And then there was like this mm, less than half left, so I gave it to Kano. 
the woman who works at the Mirage because I couldn't get it home like that. But it was a delicious backstage treat. And then somebody, she said, pour it in a Guinness. Yeah, I never thought about that. You met See? Them backstage, didn't you? I met, I'm, yes, backstage. And then, yeah, I took a picture with these guys. Then I met a termite at the drag show, Mary. She was very nice, and her husband. And there were termites everywhere, all over the strip. I have wonderful termites. Other comedians have people running up to smack them in the face and hit them and hurt them. I have people <laughs> bringing me beer back from Ireland. That is yeah. not easy. That is a pain in the ass. Yeah. And you got to lie in custom. So yeah. they have lying termites, um, which is wonderful. No, everybody, I'm trying to think. There were two more. Oh, two at the airport. I went in, <laughs> went in to get a goodbye beer. Uh-huh. And a, a lady and a man just, they, they turned, whipped around. And yeah, and they were like... Oh my God, we, just, we flew in to see from Utah. They've been to Vegas three times. I'm like, that's what happens when you live in Utah. You're going to have to leave the state three times a month to, to have that much fun. Um, there were termites everywhere, all over the place. It was great. Yeah. So, what are we, what are we tasting? <gasps> How about a little Tessame's Habanero Ranch? Tessame's a good name. Tess, I like Tessame's. I like all their products. It's expensive, though. Pricey. It's organic. I can't, I can't even tell the difference. It's not that organic because I like it. I can tell you that. Well, this is kind of thick. What's going on here? Did I freeze this too much? Jesus, this is like ketchup. Side angle. I am side angling it. Use your finger. No. Yeah, use your finger. All right. There. Gross. <laughs> well, you told me to do it. Yeah. Um. I don't know about that. <laughs> mm. It's got a lot of... I don't know about that. Well, I don't know what you would use it for. <laughs> salad. It's too thick for salad dressing. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, Well, I like it. It's hot. It's got a little kick to it. Um, Here, I'll give it a B plus. Oh, thanks. It's a B plus. B+. It's hot. You know what I'd rather use it on? Carrots. Yeah, carrots or broccoli or whatever you put on a... Dip. It's like a dip. Yeah. Too thick for salad dressing. Okay. Just in time for summer. Now, I hate key lime pie. <laughs> oh, I hate all pie, mm-hmm. except chocolate. Chocolate pie? My mom makes a chocolate pie. Yeah, she just takes pudding, jello yeah. pudding. Puts it in a pie crust, then they'll put it in the refrigerator, they get cold, and the top's hard. And then put whipped cream on top. I just like the pudding, who's getting who. No, pie, I'm a big, no thank you. Um, but I particularly hate key lime pie, and M&M's has made key lime M&M's. Oh. So I'm going to taste it, but know that I hate it. So if I hate this, yeah, tastes like key lime pie. Yeah. No. It tastes like key lime pie. If you like it, it's this green bag for summer. Ugh. It's not from... This is why it's the work of the Lord. Oh, my God. Because I bought this knowing I hate this. But I thought, if it tastes like it, then I'll know that the termites who like key lime pie... There you go. ...does a nice, refreshing summer treat. Mm-hmm. Put it in the freezer. Yeah. Don't break your crowns. Here's the last thing. Uh, Seven-layer dip combos... Baked tortilla. Let's see about that. I don't know. I'm never a combos person. I like the pizza ones. The pizza ones? Yeah, they're good on a road trip. No. No? It's so dry. Okay. Well. <laughs> I mean, well, this, would be, this would be like shit you'd feed to a dog as a kid just to watch the dog go. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm going to give him dog peanut butter. <laughs> That's terrible. So that's a no. That is an F. That's a huge F. Okay. All right. I don't, I've never well. freely bought combos, but they're in gas stations everywhere. But yes, Tessame, Habanero Ranch, delicious. All right. We only have one. Well, Tanya, uh, speaking of what the ladies were up to, Tanya was at Pride and had on this outfit. We'll post a picture. It was the most fabulous thing. She's like female Elvis. 
But then she had this giant thing behind the outfit that was attached to the eye outfit of this, like, almost like if a peacock's wing, the whole thing was rainbow. Oh. It was fantastic. Put it in the show notes. Put it in the show notes. Yep. And it was hot as shit in Nashville. So good for her yeah. for getting out there. Uh, Queen Stevie has returned, which, by the way, uh, now that I am back and I have really a month off, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Yeah, it's already filling up, though. Um, but Are you going to do the podcast? Yes, I'm going to do the podcast. Okay. Yes. Sure I don't consider this work. This is just fun. Okay. Um, uh, like traveling. But I thought, I'm so tired, and then every time I go to Vegas, I get... Uh, I, <laughs> I get no, I get some sort of head cold because outside it's 110. Then you go in the casino, and it's 32 degrees. It's like an instant sinus problem, um, but I made it in one piece, and uh, I added it up. So, so for the the last three hundred sixty five days, seventy one cities, wow. and that's not counting if I had to go home, like if I had to bop into St. Louis or the Ozarks, like my parents had a health deal, whatever. I'm not counting cities. I'm only talking about shows. Okay. 71 cities, 42 weeks in a row. Wow. So that's more than 71 shows because a lot of them were two two show nights to make up for COVID. Mm-hmm. So, um, Good job. Yeah, I've, yes, I'm a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see my fucking suitcase. I've already put it away, away, where I can't see it really? in the extra bedroom closet. Yep, I don't want to see it. Away, away. Yeah, away, yeah, away. Over um, Stevie is done with her little tour, and she posted this on Instagram. Dear people, Uh I got home from the tour late Wednesday night exhausted. It was great to be back in my world doing what I love for the first time in three years, and I did not get COVID. We definitely proved that it could be done if you follow the rules. Good, me neither. This is the good news. That is the good news. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that women's rights have been taken away. Before I say everything I want to, I would like for everyone to watch the documentary called The Janes. Never heard of it? The Janes? I will do it. Right. Whatever she says. I watched it tonight. It was a huge deja vu for me, uh, as it is about my generation leading up to Roe versus Wade. Please watch it. It will blow your mind. Much love, Stevie. P.S. History is repeating itself, and it's even more frightening this time. Wow. So Stevie's recommending, since I don't have a documentary to recommend because I've been busy, uh, I have been watching all my Peaky Blinders, though, if you guys are looking for something to watch. I love Peaky Blinders. Um, oh, and I've been watching Hacks, but I feel like season two, it's still good, but there's a lot of scenes where I just go, that that's not normal language. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, it's too jokey-jokey. They need to get something going on on that one yet, but, uh, but give, I will give it plenty of chance. Um, so that's what Stevie is recommending we all go watch. The Jane. The Janes. Okay. I don't even know what she's talking about, but I will do it. Um, everybody else? Uh, <laughs> Cher's Twitter feed just exploded. And I mean, <laughs> she's just shit. I just love, I love mildly women. Stella Parton, Cher. I love the women that just say whatever. This is why, too, I think, like, the view, this is where women get, they don't want anybody to be old. Like, Joy Behar is probably the oldest person, oh, probably the oldest woman on television right now, because I think she's 72. Let me see. And she's cool. But, like, The View should put on Stella Parton. Yes. But that yes. that's going to be a thing where they're like, well, you know, we're hoping for somebody in their 40s. You know, well, who cares? It's a talk yeah. show. It, yeah. Put put the, because the, the older women aren't afraid to say whatever they think. Whatever it is they think. I don't even care. Joy Behar is 79. She's 79? Yep. Joyous. She looks fabulous. Yeah. She turns 80 October 7th. She turns 80 October 7th. She's Her skin a, is Scorpio. great. She's a Scorpio. Yeah. That's why she acts out sometimes. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving into the show show. Update. Boom. Oh, God. I hate to tell you all. Q returns after a two-year hiatus. Oh, God. Uh-huh. No, Q himself oh. on 8chan, the board, 
the anonymous message board user known as Q, it's this little Asian guy. He's a dipshit. <laughs> like, they've already shown who it is, and he's a total dipshit. And people are spending... I feel very sorry for people whose relatives went down this rabbit hole and they can't get them back because they probably thought, well... After JFK didn't show up the second time, maybe dad or mom or cousin Bob will snap out of it. Right. But now it's f- f- fucking starting yeah, again. King Doe's back. <sighs> the anonymous message board user known as Q, whose cryptic announcement spawned the fascist pro-Trump QAnon conspiracy, QAnon conspiracy theory, has returned to posting after a two-year hiatus. You know, I don't know. There has to be... I don't know. I guess you can't stop idiots from believing shit, but... Yeah, on Friday night, someone with access to Q's login credential posted on 8, this says 8KUN, I thought it was 8chan, the anarchic internet community where Q po- was last posted, he didn't, he hasn't posted since de- December 2020. Shall we play a game once more? Oh. Uh, the message was written in the same clue-like format as thousands of earlier Q posts dubbed Q drops by their fans that led to the creation of QAnon in, the, in late 2017. Q followers believe the message messages explain the world as it really is, controlled by Satan-worshipping, child-eating pedophiles of the Democratic Party, finance, and other institutions. Uh, hmm. Are you re- ready to serve your country again, Q wrote? Remember your oath. Despite its ludic- ludicrous claims, QAnon managed to become become a faction within the Republican Party. Two current members, Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, shocker, and Lauren Boebert, well, however you even say her name. Uh, Bo- Boebert? I don't know. I can't say her name. They voice they voice support for Q. I mean, I this Marjorie Taylor, the other one seems like a super-duper idiot, but Marjorie, like, she seems to have a fan base. Yeah, uh, well, it's a level of just ignorant. I mean, um, uh, so the guy, is his last name is Watkins. He's Q. He's this guy that I told you is a dipshit. He's denied posting his Q, but he didn't respond to a media request for comment on Q's return. It's not clear whether the Q posts are meant to coincide with the Supreme Court's ruling Friday o- overturning abortion rights. Uh, he has won backing from several... Trump supporters included Michael Flynn, comedian Roseanne Barr. <laughs> and I like to think of Roseanne as a friend, and I haven't talked to her in quite some time, but Roseanne is so, so, so smart that I would have to have her explain to me. Why? 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 Um, uh, the conspiracy has also inspired terrorism and multiple murders, as well as providing the inspiration for the Capitol riot, some of the Capitol rioters. Well, I feel very bad. I'm sure there's people out there that are like, well, good. Now that JFK didn't show up again, you know, maybe someone's going to snap out of it and return to normal. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the Capitol rioters, update. Oh Anti- well, we, just because I like to keep track. I know. I watched that whole thing that day, and I thought, if these fuckers don't get in trouble, if we got it. They're at, but see, they don't really, like, I find these articles, but they don't, I don't know, they don't really talk about it on the news that much. Um, certainly not the local news in Nashville. It's mostly about when the weather's going to be fine to take your dog out. That's what. <laughs> it's the dog walking weather. And in the Ozarks, forget it. We have a whole segment on the biggest fish caught. <laughs> and I'm going to send the picture of my mom with her bass in, even though it's old. I'm going to see awesome. if I can get her on the local news. Mm-hmm. Here's Vicky Maddie in her 7.5 pound bass, <laughs> which I have mounted, and my dad didn't want it in his office anymore, and so I took it, and every single guy that walks into this house to do some sort of whatever to the house, mm-hmm. is that bass sing or is that real? Do you really think I'd have a Billy the Bass hanging in my kitchen if it wasn't real? Maybe. Come on, I'm not that tacky. <laughs> I'm like, no, my mom caught that. Oh, yeah. Anti-vaccine doctor sentenced to prison for Capitol riot. Oh. A lady doctor. Oh, no. California doctor who's a leading figure in the anti-vax movement was sentenced on Thursday to two months in prison. Two months. Oh. And they're whining. I spent longer in a reality show. <laughs> I mean, shut up. <laughs> it's not... And really, the reality show was worse than prison. Because at least in prison, you get fed three times a day, and you get to work out. 
and you get to make phone calls. I couldn't do any of that in Last Comic Standing. Nope. nope. Couldn't even bring books. No internet. Books are banned on Last Comic Standing. They were. And then me and John Heffron, this other comedian who I love, we were like, well, the other reality shows people are drinking on Top Chef. They have wine. Why can't we have alcohol? Right. And then all of a sudden, a six-pack appeared. Me and John drank two each. Right. We left two in the fridge, one each for the following day, and they took it. It was gone in the morning. Beer? Yep. I guess they didn't trust us. I'm not sure I'd trust me and John either. (laughs) We were the only two that gave a shit. Nobody else cared. Um, uh, She sent it too much, two months, for storming the U.S. Capitol where she delivered speeches to rioters during the mob's attack. She... um, she was also sentenced, her name is Dr. Simone Gold, to 12 months of supervised release after a 60-day prison term in order to pay a $9,500 fine. She can report to prison at a date to be determined. A former emergency room physician said she deeply regrets entering the Capitol during the riot and didn't intend to get involved in the event that was so, quote, destructive to our nation. Um, she founded America's Frontline Doctors, a group known for purveying COVID-19 mis- misinformation. The Beverly Hills doctor, a Stanford Law School graduate. Come on. Wow. Has over 480,000 followers on Twitter. She's condemned lockdowns and promoted the use of unproven and potentially dangerous drugs as coronavirus treatment. She told, uh, the judge told her that her anti-vax activism wasn't a factor, um, but in fact that she wasn't a casual bystander. Uh, She said that her organization has misled supporters into believing her prosecution was politically motivated and trampled on her free speech rights. Cooper called it unseemly. I love that word. Unseemly. Please, don't be unseemly. (laughs) Um, I think it's a real disservice to the true victims of the day. She pleaded guilty to entering and remaining in a restricted building, a misdemeanor that carries a maximum sentence of one year in prison. Which, by the way, how about the WNBA lady? Talk about prison in the Russian prison. She had to show up for a hearing today, and she looked absolutely terrified. And I don't know if they took her to get even Stephen because of Ukraine or whatever, but she's been over there since February 17th. I would be terrified. And then I read only 1% of people are acquitted in Russian trials. And, unlike this country, acquittals can be overturned. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'd be scared shitless if I was her. I don't understand. The government's got to have... Unless she really did something bad, bad. But, I mean, if, if it was cannabis oil in a vape pen, I mean, she st- still shouldn't do it if they say no. I wouldn't do anything they say no. But she's young. Young people do dumb things. I mean, yeah, and if it's just a vape pen with pot oil, I don't know. That is sidetrack. Anyway. Don't fuck with Russia. Um, she said that she wasn't part of a riot. Where she was was incredibly peaceful. Right. But you're still in the Capitol. You're not supposed to be in the Capitol. You're right. trespassing. Um, she 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 hasn't shown remorse or accepted responsibility for her actions. They accused her of trying to profit from her crime, saying America's Frontline Dollars has raised more than $430,000 through its website for her legal expenses. It beggars belief that gold could have incurred anywhere near $430,000 in costs for her criminal defense. After all, she pleaded guilty in the face of indisputable, readily identifiable evidence without filing a single motion. So she, where'd that money go? You keeping it? Jesus, I, people are just yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, night night turn my she's going to jail for two months. It's not that long. People are... It is in Russia. Yeah. No, I'm talking about that this is the doctor lady. No, the doctor. No, in Russia, yes. It yeah. would be terrible. Update! <laughs> Update! Anytime now I have an Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, they're just going in updates. Because... Okay. Um, because there's it just it's ongoing. It's forever ongoing. Mm-hmm. Elon Musk fa- faces a two hundred fifty eight billion dollar lawsuit over alleged Dogecoin, or as we like to call it here, Doggy Coin <laughs> Pyramid Scheme. So okay, ah, uh, somebody sued him for two hundred fifty eight million dollars. Of course, it was fake. Of course, it was a pyramid scheme. That's why when I say, "Oh, I have Bitcoin and Ethereum," which is down now. But I just put in enough money to play. I want to be on the ride. I just want to get... When people go, well, don't you know it's a Ponzi scheme? Of course I know. Yeah. I don't care. I just want to play. It's like musical chairs. When the music finally stops, did you get a chair? Right. And when do you want to get out of the Ponzi scheme? 
It's a, it's like a challenge. You can get out. I could have sold this all months ago. Probably should have too. As I watch it just tumble. Um, uh, uh, they're facing a $250 billion lawsuit over a uh, Dogecoin. As I've said before, it's a year of crazy headlines. Uh, Musk and his companies are being sued that they are part of a racketeering scheme involving Do- Dogecoin cryptocurrency. The potentially expensive lawsuit was filed by Keith Johnson, who claims that Musk, SpaceX, and, and SpaceX and Tesla were all part of a large-scale pyramid scheme designed to control the point of Dogecoin while convincing people online that the cryptocurrency was a legitimate and sound investment. Well, if you believe that, Snoop Dogg's telling you to get it. I mean... I would trust Snoop. I do trust Snoop. To an extent. Right. He's not a financial he's, advisor. He's really no, he's <laughs> super high, and he makes great songs. Yeah. Go for you. Yeah. It'd be like listening to me. Don't listen to me. You're an idiot if you Here's take that. You should go talk to some real person. Why don't you let me give you medical advice, too? I mean, no. You should call your friend Drew. Yeah, you call my friend Drew, or call my brother Patrick. He'll tell you. But don't listen to... Um, in the court documents... His legal team that says Musk and his companies artificially and illegally inflated the price of Dogecoin. And the docs, do- <laughs> he also alleges that he was defrauded out of money by Musk Dogecoin crypto pyramid scheme. That, by the way, was the that by the way was the name of my electric punk band in high school. Ha ha ha! Somebody from yeah, who's trying to be funny. Um, it he wants eighty six billion dollars in damages. <laughs> On top of that, he wants triple the damages of $172 billion, as well as a legal order from the court blocking Musk from promoting Dogecoin. It's, by the way, Dogecoin's still fine. I put in $500. Let's see how much I have today. Okay. It, was, it, it went down to like two. But that's why I played, because I just don't care. It's okay. 500 bucks. Right. It just bet, bet it. Let's see. Oh, 225 Well done. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Mm-hmm. Half. Do you want to walk away from the craps table with half your money? Or do you want to stay? Stay. Stay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you get the point. I mean, people, people, if I was a judge, I'd just throw the shit out. I guess you can't just throw it out, but I mean, I would. I would throw it out. Oh, my God. Holy shit, they found it. We're moving on. <laughs> it just, um, this is awesome. And just spectacular. So in the show notes, known as the schnotes, we're going to have a picture of it, or you can go Google it. A whole baby mammoth named Nunchoga is the second found in the world, the first in North America. It is adorable. Yeah. It looks like a baby elephant with his giant tusk and its tail. It's perfectly intact. Is it hairy? There's hair on it, yeah. A perfect storm of events has led to a once-in-a-lifetime discovery for a gold miner, a First Nation, uh, a First Nation, a veteran paleontologist, and and a territory. Oh, I know that. I don't know how to process it all right now, to be honest with you. It's amazing," said Dr. Grant Zazlua, the Yukon government's paleontologist. A little after June, a little after noon on June 21st, natu- National Indigenous Peoples Day. You should know that. I do. Paddles. Yeah. Canadian holiday. I celebrate it. A young miner working in Yukon's Eureka Creek, south of Dawson City, was digging up muck using a front end loader when he struck something. He stopped and called his boss and went to see him right away. When he arrived, Treadstones Mining's Brian McCoggan put a stop to the operation on the spot. Within a half an hour, Zazla received a picture of the discovery. The miner had made the most important discovery in paleontology in North America. That's just awesome that can still happen now. You know, it was that's why we have this segment because and it's good, hopeful stuff. And in the Yukon. And in the Yukon. It was a whole baby woolly mammoth. Only second one found in the world. And the first one, she has a trunk, she has a tail, she has tiny little ears. She has the little prehensile end of the trunk where she could use it to grab grass. She's perfect and she's beautiful. The paleontologist started studying the Ice Age in the Yukon in 1999, and this has been something I've always dreamed of, to see one face-to-face. This week, the dream came true. The, uh, we're all excited, including the elders and a lot of the staff. Uh, I don't need to know all that. The amazing thing is that within an hour of them being up there to do the work, so they were going to get it out, right? Yeah. Um, 
The sky opened up, it turned black, lightning started striking, and rain started pouring in. So if she wasn't recovered at that time, she would have been lost in the storm. Oh, Timing is everything. Yes. Um, they named her Nunchoga, which means big baby animal <laughs> in the something language. It's a First Nation. I'll never be able to say it. it uh, it's about 140 centimeters long. Oh, which, by the way, speaking of centimeters, uh, which is metric, yep. I asked all my friends this weekend, Chuck, who's very smart, CJ, young and very smart, mm-hmm. Heidi, my friend from St. Louis, asked everybody, do you guys know what kind of math system we use? And they were like, it's just math, right? Nobody knew. And I finally, because I, I know I don't. Education. What? You yeah, question your education. You should question the education in this yeah. country. Yeah. That's a simple thing to learn. Well, and then on the Delta map, your flight tracker thing, it says metric or imperial. I never noticed it. But that's how arrogant we are. We just are like, it's math. <laughs> Isn't it like that everywhere? No, it's not. Um, uh, they think Nun Cho Ga was probably about 30 to 35 years old, days old when she died. Based on the geology of the site, they believe she died between 35,000 and 40,000 years ago. Wow. She died during the last age, ice age and, found in, and she was found in permafrost. He said the geologist who recovered her saw a piece of the animal's intestines with grass on it. So that tells us what she did during the last moments of her life. He said she was probably a few steps away from her mom, but ventured off a little bit eating grass and drinking water and got stuck in the mud. And that event from getting trapped in the mud to burial was very, very quick. Uh, then they had a big ceremony for her, the First Nations, though. Uh, it was a very powerful ceremony, said Nagano, who added the elders blessed the baby woolly mammoth. Um and said it took her breath away when the tarp was removed. We must treat it with respect, so on and so forth. It's a miracle. It's so great. you got to see the picture of it. It's perfect. Hmm? Trondek? Trondek? Huachin. Huachin. Yep. Okay, there, I said it. It's the tribe. That's the tribe? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, holy shit, they found it. The world's deepest shipwreck. No, the Titanic didn't go that far down. This is discovered almost after it's been missing for 80 years. The U- United States USS destroyer escort Samuel B. Roberts has finally been found in the Philippine Sea by explorers. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, it sank to the depths of the water almost 78 years ago in the Western Pacific Ocean and has baffled hunters for decades. But the eagle-eyed adventurer Victor Vescavo who has completed expeditions to the world's deepest point, located the wreck on June 22nd. He found the vessel, now broken in two, at the depth of 22,621 feet, which wow. is over 3,000 foot taller than Mount Kilimanjaro's peak. The explorer wow. dived down with a pilot and sonar specialist, Jeremy, somebody to try and trace the wreck from end to end. After dropping down six times over eight days, the team found two halves, ships, two halves of the ship positioned around 33 feet from one another. Previous data suggested the possible location of the ship had been inaccurate, forcing them to go back to the drawing board. They instead armed themselves with a custom-built side-scan solar system after carrying out the exhaustive, uh, exhaustive research. Wow. Resting at 6,895 meters. Stop with the meters. <laughs> it's now the deepest shipwreck ever located and surveyed. It appears her bow hit the seafloor with some force, causing some buckling. Well, I wonder what made them sink. Uh, this ship, this small ship took on the finest of the Japanese Navy fighting. Oh, the Japanese sunk them. Oh, this incredible warship is thought to have been taken out by a Japanese vessel during the Battle of Samar in 1944. I guess they all died. I wonder if I get them all the, Yeah, or did they have to swim around with a bunch of sharks like the rest of those guys did? I that, I think I'd rather just die. Me too. Yeah. But you could live that other way. Yeah. You know. I don't know. News. <laughs> this this story is crazy. Yeah. So Nelly, uh-huh. mm, the rapper, not the one from Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Nelly Olson. <laughs> no, that would be Nelly Olson. This is Nelly, the rapper, who's from where? St. Louis. We're all very proud of Nelly, <laughs> and, and he represents well in videos. He always wears a cardinal hat. He's always got some STL on him somewhere. Yeah, he's very proud. Um, so I have an aunt. There's an area 
like 60 miles away from the arch. You're going out, out, heading west. You kind of go out. It's called Wildwood. It it used to be a lot less populated, but it's, it's kind of catching on now. But it's beautiful. It's out in the woods. Uh, it's cool. My aunt um, had a house out there for a while. Um, and so did my brother and sister-in-law. Um, but you're kind of isolated out there. Mm-hmm. Well, at least this is, I haven't been out there in 15 years. But anyway. Neighbors, okay, so... The, uh, there's an alleged cult that has bought Nellie's crumbling mansion. Where do you hear this shit? This is where, like, HOAs, we always joke. Sometimes I, some part of me wants to do a whole po- podcast on people complaining about HOAs. That'd be fun. Yeah. Like, my brother sent the letter to my brother and his wife saying that their cat was actively taunting other cats, <laughs> and they wanted Bruce to be put... He's named, he's Batman, Bruce mm-hmm. Wayne. Bruce should be put inside because he's taunting. Like, some of these HOAs have just gone so, but really an HOA, we always joke, it's only as powerful as you can enforce it. Right. So, okay, so somebody breaks the HOA rule. Now what are we going to do? Right. Are you going to get a lawyer? Mm-hmm. You're going to call the cops? It's a fine line, and it's a fine line because in Nashville, like three houses over, there's a hoarder, mm-hmm. and everybody's called, and they don't do anything. Right. There's nothing... Unless you can prove somebody's endangering themselves, well, I don't know. Right. I just know there's way too much shit outside, and yeah. I know there's codes that are supposed to be, well, we'll give him a ticket. Oh, good, you know, good luck finding that. He's going to shove it in some couch that's got right. rats all over it. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Neighbors of the Kingdom of God Global Church, an organization many accuse of being a cult, says that strange occurrences around church-owned properties in West County have left them confused and at times even a little frightened. There's definitely a lot of questions about what is actually going on, exactly what's going on with this group. Chesterfield prosecuting attorney so-and-so said, they could certainly run whatever organization they want out of the dozens of commercial areas around Chesterfield, but they chose the kind of land right in the middle of neighborhoods. Yeah, they bought the crumbling Nellie mansion. I still don't understand why Nellie's mansion is crumbling. But uh, they didn't cover that in the Not article. Points. I'll have to look that one up later for the next podcast. Um, the River Time, Riverfront Times, that's the paper in St. Louis, previously reported on the church purchasing Nellie's old mansion in Wildwood, as well as a house in Chesterfield on Wild Horse Meadow Drive that the church vacated after four years and numerous complaints related to the 30 or more people allegedly living in the, in, in the residence. Can you do that? I mean... If it's a single family resident, isn't that defined at some number? In total, the Kingdom of God Global Church owns at least nine properties in the St. Louis County. In St. Louis County. He said he understands the neighbors being concerned about what they see happening around the church. Um, yeah, there's, there's guys at night with suits and sunglasses on. What? Yeah. He said one of the violations w- was for running a commercial enterprise out of a residential subdivision. They tried to assert these were simple Bible studies, but the scope of what was going on was much greater than Bible studies. I've seen pictures of children being led out of that house. They're all holding hands in a long line and being loaded into a van. What? What? That's unusual in the middle of a subdivision, and it alarms people. (laughs) Fuck yeah, it would. In addition to Nellie's former mansion, they also own, and then they go through all this other property they own. Um, About hearing complaints from neighbors on Wild Horse Meadow Drive, an individual living on Hagger Lane said it sounded similar to what she dealt with in the secluded corner of Chesterfield. The neighbor estimates that at any given time there were around 30 people living there, mostly young boys. She'd she'd often see teams of boys playing sports. Well, whose kids are these? They, They certainly, they weren't creating a bad thing. They weren't smoking or drinking or yelling. They were just playing basketball. Right. But there's, I have neighbors that smoke and drink. That's fine. They're not a cult. They don't, have 30 boys. They don't right. They're not, right. She was more concerned for their well-being, wondering what such a large amount of boys were doing in the one house. The church had been accusing of using its followers in a manner akin to telemarketers, having them work long shifts, cold calling and messaging people on Facebook to solicit donations. The church also operates a, quote, dream interpretation phone line. Come on. Strict zoning laws govern what individuals can and can't do in residential areas. Right. He says his office is responsive responsive to neighbor complaints, but zoning laws are being about zoning laws being broken, but his office doesn't patrol the city searching for infractions. 
Right, but once they're reported, multiple neighbors said that there were U-Hauls constantly coming out in and out of the church-owned property, usually late at night, around midnight or 1 a.m. Yeah. Wow, this is weird, too. Security cameras affixed to a barn across the street from the church property often recorded high-end cars leaving the property in the middle of the night headed toward nearby Etherton Road. The cars always return 10 to 15 minutes later. In our mind, what could they possibly be doing out there outside that road? There's no stores here. There's nothing. Something was going on. The neighbors said that the church was under the impression that when they bought the house, they had exclusive rights to the street running from their property to Etherton Road. I, what is going on? Um, in church videos, so I guess they have videos. I'm going to go look them up online, but then they're probably going to know I did that. Follow me or something. <laughs> right? Don't give anybody money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you interpret my dream? Uh, the neighbor is likely referring to a well-produced video published by the church in which the organization's leader... The leader's Dave Taylor. He predicts the reunification of North and South Korea. A prophecy, Taylor says, Jesus revealed, relayed to him in a dream. The video contains newsreel footage of Kim Jong-un. They frequently weigh in on geo, uh, global geopolitics. In a church video, they say they have predicted, oh, Taylor claims to have predicted 9-11, saying the terrorist attacks were financed by Russia. Now, Taylor says, Russia is sneaking nuclear subs into the United States. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to do a deep dive. You know I'm into the cults. Why don't we have a thing going on here? Are they Missouri? What? Are they only St. Louis? It sounds like they're only in St. Louis. They own a lot, though. That's sketchy. Yeah. Oh, no, my Loch Ness Monster. Okay, here's two. These are kind of updates. You guys know I like uh, Basquiat, the artist guy. Mm -hmm. Listen to these two dipshits. Man and a woman try to steal a $45,000 Basquiat painting from a Manhattan gallery. Yep. New York police are on the hunt for a man and a woman accused of trying to snatch a $45,000 painting by the famed artist Jean-Michel Basquiat from a Manhattan gallery this month. They said the duo managed to take the painting, which was on display at Talagatega Galleries. They took it off the wall at about 5.30. They almost managed to walk out with it, but they were stopped. The police said it was unclear who stopped them, they fled, and they were last seen walking north on 10th Avenue. <laughs> so if anybody has, uh, the man was described in his 20s or 30s. He was wearing a maroon and gray sweatshirt. I mean, what? <laughs> What's crazy is you're dumb enough to do this, but you're smart enough to know that a Basquiat painting is worth 50 grand right. or way more or <laughs> should be way more. And why would you only go for the $45,000 one? Oh, my God. And then this just happened last week. This is creepy. The FBI has seized a total of 25 Jean-Michel Basquiat paintings from the Orlando Museum of Art as questions of the work's authenticity were raised. Over a dozen FBI agents proceeded with the operation on the morning of June 25th. It's important to note that we still have not been led to believe the museum has been or is the subject of the investigation. We continue to see our involvement as purely a fact witness. What? Like... Somebody wow. tricked them and told them we have real ones and they hung them up? I mean, people are dumb. Well, you're the art museum. You're the last <laughs> call for proving if this shit is real. When I go in an art museum, I just assume somebody checked this shit out, right? <laughs> it, oh, here's the Mona Lisa. No, really. If you notice, her ear's higher than the other ones. I mean, come on. Let's get it together, Orlando. Do I have to send Carrot Top down there? Do I? <laughs> I will. Oh, he'd be great. <laughs> God dang. Oh, I mean, God. the assumptions you make is just <laughs> me just wandering around with $20 to get into anything on the road. I just assume well, I went into the Wizard of Oz stuff in Kansas. I just assume it's real. Right. That lady was very serious. I'm sure it was real. Here's some super, oh, my God, I would vomit. Velveeta releases cheese-scented nail polish in collaboration with Nails Incorporated. Oh. You want your toes, the whole point of a shower is so that your toes don't smell like cheese. <laughs> cheese lovers can now wear their fairy David, fairy, favorite dairy product on their fingers thanks to Velveeta and British nail polish brands Nails Inc. A limited edition 
set of two cheese scented apologies will cost cheese fanatics 15 bucks on nails inc website dot website there's nothing called dot website who wrote that it includes two shades finger food a bright wet red and la dulce velveta a cream yellow color oh the polish's signature cheesy scent only appears when they are dry gross Although Velveeta's products are not vegan, the formulation of both colors in, is vegan and cruelty-free. I, that you know, that can't last. No, who's gonna? Uh, well, they got a drag queen, social media star, K Five. I can't say it. Somebody on RuPaul's Drag Race is advertising it, so I just think it sounds gross. Yeah. We are going to buy some. Well, if we can get it. Yeah. The child, try to beat the children. Yeah. You won't. Nope. nope. This is so sad. <laughs> so, a hundred years ago, Princess Di had a rich friend. Okay. This lady ran up and down the Las Vegas Strip and found comedians that she thought were funny okay. and then flew us all to Hong Kong. To do a show for their rich friends. What? Yep. <laughs> okay. It was a disaster on levels. <laughs> it was epic. It was an epic <laughs> failure. Because she rented out this <laughs> ginormous <laughs> theater. <laughs> Lewis got picked. Yeah. I got picked. And two more guys. I can't remember their names. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I couldn't have been any more than... 28 years old. Like, I wasn't even a good... I was an okay comedian. Lou was better. I was okay. The other two guys were fine. But we're the ones they picked. Hong Kong, not my cup of tea. I'm not into it. Um, and it was just... It was a very strange trip. But uh, there was this jumbo floating restaurant. And me and Lou went. Because I, I'm that sucker. I'm the lady that goes, look at that giant restaurant. Right. It's imperial, like it's old timey, you know, the traditional, um, the architecture, like a pagoda, like a pagoda. A pagoda. Mm -hmm. right? Um, there you go, yeah. imperial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it had been there for a total of forty six years. Well, sadly, it sunk. It was their right. It was like their arch. Like it was yeah. a thing everybody knew about. The world's largest Buddha and the restaurant. Everybody wanted to go. And the food was great. It was super fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just you couldn't believe that it was floating. It was enormous. Yeah. It was so large. Yeah. yeah. Hong Kong's iconic jumbo floating restaurant is capsized in the South capsized in the South China Seas less than a week after it was towed on Saturday. It sunk as it was passing the Jishisha Islands known as the Parcel Islands in the South China Sea, and, the, and water entered the vessel and it began to tip, according to the Aberdeen Restaurant Enterprises. Now, here's the thing. Every time, this is on a much smaller scale, uh, at a lake, if you have to call tow people, usually the two guys that show up to tow your shit look at best questionable. <laughs> um, but they're the guys. Right. So you give them some beers, hope for the best, hope they know what they're doing. This towing company is in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, the company said nobody was injured, but efforts to save the vessel failed as it capsized. Imagine you're the tow guys, and all of a sudden you see this restaurant just going, Mwah! you're like, back up, back up, fuck, floor it, just gun it, gun it. It's sinking, I'm not kidding. I would be... Oh, my God. If I was driving that towboat, yeah. I don't know. how They had to have a few. Yeah. Somebody messed up. Yeah, Somebody slacked off. Let's see how much it, weighs. it didn't go. Um, as the water depth at the scene was over 1,000 meter, it makes it extremely difficult to carry out our work, they said oh, in a statement. On. It said the company is very saddened by the incident. The jumbo floating restaurant, almost 260 feet in length. Yep. Yes have been a landmark in Hong Kong for over four decades, serving Cantonese cuisine to over three million guests, including Queen Elizabeth and Tom Cruise. And what about Kathleen Madigan? Come on. I was at the bar. My termite was in there. Yeah. Louis Black was in there. 
Uh, it closed in 2020 oh, due to the pandemic and laid off all its staff. Aberdeen restaurant employees said the restaurant had become a financial burden to shareholders with millions of Hong Kong dollars spent on its inspection and maintenance, even though it was not in operation. Well, now I wow. think maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, now we get to the truth of the matter. The restaurant was towed away last Tuesday. The company said it planned to move it to a lower cost site where maintenance could be carried out. It had said prior to its departure, the vessel had been thoroughly inspected by marine engineers and hoardings were installed and all relevant approvals obtained. The company is now getting further details of the accident from the towing company. That's a lot of silverware at the bottom of the China <laughs> Sea. That's a lot of forks. It's a lot of salt and pepper shakers. That is a lot of crap. That's... Uh, Here's some, this is, this is unbelievable. I'm, one of my other obsessions is Mount Everest. I know. I'm obsessed. We all know. I'm obsessed with the movie uh, Into Thin Air. I'm obsessed with people that want to do it. I'm obsessed with, well, I have Renaud syndrome, which means my digits go cold if it's like lower than 50 degrees outside. So I will never be part of any of this. Um, I don't think I'd want to. I don't like being cold. I'd rather be hot. Uh, but I read some articles about there are people going to base camp now just to party for the fucking Instagram picture. Oh but also, I don't know how these permits go and who's making money off all that, but somebody's going to have to get a grip on this shit because we're ruining Mount Everest. Right. And the Sherpas, I'm obsessed with them too and how hard they work. And they, they've been hollering about it for a while. Well, we're now having to move base camp. We're going to have to move it two to 400 feet um, or meters It's, the, it's basically a meter's basically a yard. A meter's a yard. That still doesn't help me. Paddles. Did you have a yardstick? Yes, I had a yardstick. Well, my dad did. I just held it. I didn't pay attention. We had to learn that. <laughs> meter yard? We didn't have to learn that. Jimmy Carter threatened us once. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carter threatened we were going to turn to metric, and then he forgot. Thank God. <laughs> Global warming and increased human activity have forced Nepal to move the Everest Base Camp. The ice surrounding the camp is, camp is rapidly melting and thinning. The camp is situated atop Kumba Glacier Camp at an altitude of 5,364 meters. Last year, it attracted nearly 1,500 people from all over the world during the spring trekking season. Um, the director general of the country's tourism department, I can't say his name. I'm going to call him Tara. It's a guy, but it's Tar Tara Nath Adiki Hart. I can't do it. Said that the news base camp is being moved to lower altitude. It does not have year-round ice. The new campsite for cl uh, climbers will be located two to four or meet lowers lower than the existing one. We're now preparing, preparing for relocation. We'll soon begin consultation with all the stakeholders. The reason behind the decision... Um, it's basically about adapting to the changes that we're seeing. Base camps has become essential for the sustainability of, mount, of the mountaineering business itself. Government officials have informed the shifting camp could occur as soon as 2024. There's also everyone's going to the bathroom up there. Seriously. And it's melting ice, too. Everybody's just peeing up there. Gross. Right. One of the world's best-known campsites, Everest Base Camp, is now at an altitude some 50 meat lowers than it was in 1953, when Tenzig, Norgay, and Edmund Hillary climbed the world's highest peak. Most of it is covered by rocky debris. However, there are areas of exposed ice called ice cliffs. When the ice cliffs melt like that, the debris of boulders and rocks that are on top of the ice cliff fall and move, and then the melting also creates water bodies. We see also increased rock falls and the movement of meltwater on the surface of the glaciers that can be hazardous. They're lo it's losing water every year because it's melting. They got to stop letting this many people. I know they make money, but then that's where the world needs to come in and say, okay, how much money were you making <clears throat> for these extra hundred people? Assholes. Right. right. Well, we'll just give it to you right. and then stop it yes. to, to save it because they're poor. They need the money. I get it. Right. But that's where the world needs to take a little more responsibility if we care about the main things, the Amazon, shit mm -hmm. like that. Because if I lived in the Amazon... I'd get a book of matches and say, if somebody doesn't send me a billion dollars, I'm setting this motherfucker on fire. <laughs> I, just, I mean, uh, hold it as ransom. You want your Amazon? Do you? Well, then we need a check. And you get a bunch of them with lighters. There's like this lighter. Fire, fire, fire. Move the volcano down there. Yeah. <clears throat> Dear All right. MGM. <laughs> All right. 
All right, I'm going to finish on. Well, this. You're finishing? No, I was just looking at my order. Okay. <laughs> this one. I am not a business person. Okay. So sometimes, for instance, my friend Brian Dorfman, who owns Zany's Comedy Club in Nashville and Chicago and all this stuff, sometimes uh, he has booked people that I think have done bad things. Right. And I say, I can't believe you'd do that. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, Maddie, I'm a businessman. So-and-so sells tickets. Short of murder... You know, Cosby, this is why there is no cancel culture. There's consequence culture. People quit booking Bill Cosby, not because of what they thought he did or did not do, but because they didn't want to hire extra security because the protests come. Now you're costing me more money right. and you're a pain in my ass. And guess what? I can bring um, Mama Termite in here and she'll sell the same on tickets. <laughs> then I'll blow cash everywhere. And I don't cause any problems. And all my termites are doing is bringing beer and ranch dressing backstage. No problem. Right. We don't need extra security. Party we don't need off. cops. We don't need, everybody's in a good mood. So I think Just buckets for cash. I would insert some morality into booking people, mm -hmm. but I can also understand why business people, you know, if you did that, where does it stop? I also understand that argument. Right. But John Hinckley Jr., who's oh, been completely, um, Fully released, even from household arrest. So I'm sure Jody Foster is super psyched about that, because he's the guy. If you're a, if you're one of the children, termites, and you may not have heard of John Hinckley Jr., he shot Reagan, and more importantly, James Brady. I mean, he basically killed James Brady. He was in a wheelchair and just fucked up his whole life. Who's James? James Brady was at the time. I I Google it. Maybe Secretary of State. He was well, a high-ranking politician that was with Reagan that day, okay. and they came out of the hotel deal, and Hinckley shot. I thought it was part of the Brady Bunch. You thought he was part of the Brady Bunch? No, they didn't have a gym. <laughs> no, there was no gym. There was Greg, Peter, and Bobby. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, uh, his nickname was The Bear. The Bear? Yeah. What was his position? Secretary, I don't remember. Oh, good, a Midwestern person. And a, oh, he was an assistant. An assistant. Yeah, okay. Something. No, he was his assistant. Oh, he was his assistant. Okay. Yeah, you just gave him well, whatever. He took the, my huge promotion. He, I did give him a promotion. Well, why not? He took the brunt of the bad shots that day. I mean, Reagan ended up at the hospital, but he ended up okay. James Brady yeah. did not end up okay. White House press secretary. White House press secretary. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... John Hinckley went to an, in, a mental institution for all these years, and they've let him out. And he shot the, he shot Reagan and other people that were there. I don't think they were the target, but they got hit mm -hmm. to get Jodie Foster's attention, okay. which I'm sure it did. Yeah. It's probably not the attention he was hoping for. No. I think he pictured a nice wedding <laughs> somewhere <laughs> right on a beach in Maui. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, he's completely free now, and he plays the guitar. And I did go on YouTube and I watched a couple songs and they're horrific. Okay. They're not, it's not like we were hiding a secret talent in a mental institution and this guy comes out and he's like Prince. Okay. No, he's not. So this venue in Brooklyn booked him. Now, see, this is where I think you got to do a little bit of morality in booking. What are we doing? Like, cause he doesn't have talent. No. no. So you can't even use that as an excuse, but they know they'll sell tickets. And they did. It was sold out. Tickets were 20 bucks. Um, Hinckley, who attempted to kill Ronald Reagan in 1981, was set to perform a sold-out show at a Brooklyn concert next month, but the venue where the gig was booked has canceled the show. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Uh, it was called the Market Hotel in Bushwick, announced Wednesday that July 8th, the July 8th event was nixed. We don't see the need to allow someone who did something awful to skip the line and play even our middle-sized independent community stage, the event space said. But you booked them. Mm -hmm. You don't like the backlash, so yeah. now you're going to unbook them. Mm -hmm. And that's another issue I have. You're just booking this guy because he's leapfrogging the line. Right. Well, there's people that have worked really hard to get that gig, mm -hmm. and they're not getting it, but you're going to give it to this guy just because he did something horrific, and people want to go look at some crazy person. Or, are, are they 
They are original songs, yeah. Sometimes they'll sing one, you know. Yeah. But mostly original. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How much for um, John Hinckley, 67. He opened fire on Reagan March 30th, 1981, outside the Hilton in D.C. He wounded the 40th president, his press secretary, James Brady, police officer Thomas Delaney, Delante, and Secret Servant Agent Tim McCarthy. The tickets were twenty dollars. Yeah, um, we know all this, but this is what they wrote. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, and they had an Instagram post. Um, they t- they canceled them after facing an intense backlash. There was a time and a place where you could host a thing like this, maybe a little offensive. A little. Wow. What if you're Jody Foster? Right. A little, like you're rewarding him. You're rewarding him for doing. Something horrific. I mean, James Brady could never talk again. Like, he was just, you you don't reward that. Like, and then I think, well, what kind of morality do I have? Because if he was as good as Prince, I'd be like, well, let him play, right? I mean, he's so good. But this guy, this is just a freak show. Um, Maybe a little offensive. And the reaction would be, it's just a guy playing a show. Who does it hurt? It's a free country, the venue said. We aren't living in that kind of free country anymore, for better or worse. Oh, no, you can still do it. Yep. You can still do it. Don't blame cancel culture. Do it. But you're going to have to hire a shit ton of cops and security. Right. The concert said they hope Hinkley's gig would send a message that people can recover and move beyond mental health issues. Oh, bullshit. You just wanted to sell tickets. And a criminal passed and pointed out that the performer is practically harmless. How do you know? Are you a shrink? You don't know. This is a sexagenarian with an acoustic guitar. All the outrage and concern are entirely about the, quote, message it sends, unquote. Mm-hmm. He pivoted, Hinkley pivoted from ex-criminal to musician when he started publishing self-recorded videos of set singing with a slight twang and strumming a guitar to YouTube in December 2020. His channel, which has more than 28,000 subscribers, has uploaded videos of original songs, and he does covers from Joni Mitchell to Bob Dylan. He's also on Spotify. Wow. Um... Market Hotel said the show was not worth the risk for some stunt booking of a musician. Well, you did it. Right. it! They say they went through a third party. I don't care. Whenever you book through a third party, you still know who you're booking. Right. It's not a surprise show. Oh. Of a musician who we don't care about on an artistic level who upsets people in a dangerously radicalized, reactionary climate. He's also booked a show in Hamden, Connecticut on July 16th. However, the venue for that show... Space Ballroom doesn't list the gig on the calendar. Wow. Yeah, well. Space Ballroom. It's a wonderful place to perform. <laughs> I've never worked this, the Space Ballroom. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> One never knows. Um, that's just. Wow. You can still book them. That's why these people whine and piss and moan. Yeah. Let me make cancel culture. <laughs> Do it. Do it. You already sold the tickets. Yeah. But. Good luck. 20 bucks. With the security team you're going to have to hire, you're not going to want to spend the money. Nope. Okay. This is a clo- closing story for today. And it's a good one. Okay. It's very it's very sad. But there's a wonderful tribute. Okay. This is why I appreciate Mexican culture more than my own sometimes. <laughs> Never more than the Irish. We know how to do a wonderful tribute. It's the Americans, mm, not so good at it. Mm-hmm. Monkey and bulletproof vest found dead after bloody cartel Mex- cartel shootout in Mexico. And do you know where he was found? No. Laying on top of his owner. Oh, man. I told you. Awful. I told you. Yeah. Not everything's a Hallmark movie, no, Paddles. It should be, though. Real life ah. It's a lot sadder. Mexican Narcos' fascination with exotic animals was on display this week after a spider monkey dressed up as a drug gang mascot was killed in a shootout. A 450-pound tiger wandered the streets in the Pacific Coast state of Nayarit. Nayarit? Probably not saying that right. And a man died after trying to pet a captive tiger in a cartel-dominated area of western... Neocon State. Excuse all my pronunciations. I apologize in advance. 
Like the scenes out of a narco television series, exotic animals have long been part of the Mexican criminal underworld. Now, see, our underworld never did that. No, we never went, like, I mean, if you're the Al Capones and all that. Like, they didn't have monkeys and bulletproof vests. Like, this adds a lot of flavor. You probably also weren't doing cocaine while you were having the chance. Well, no. The Italian mob people didn't, they weren't really fucked up when they did their stuff. They weren't drunk or high. See? Mm-hmm. That's why I also criticized But El Chapo never did any of that. No. The guys in charge don't do it. Photos from the scene of the shootout. With the police, in which 11 get drug gang members died, showed a small monkey dressed in a tiny camouflage jacket and a tiny, quote, bulletproof vest sprawled across the body of a dead gunman who was apparently his owner. Aww. Authorities in the state of Mexico confirmed the authenticity of the photos and said it was unclear whether the monkey, which was also wearing a diaper. <laughs> what? Well, why, if he's outside? Vest he had a diaper and a bulletproof he vest. He died in the hail of bullets that killed his owner. A primate was killed at a scene, which was presumably owned by a criminal who was also killed at the scene. An autopsy will be carried out by the animal on the animal by a veterinarian specialized in the species, and animal trafficking charges would be considered against the suspects who survived the shootouts. Well, I'm sh- the guys who were part of the cartel, they didn't go by the monkey and the tiger. It's the person in charge, and if he's dead, can't blame those guys. They go to work, and there's a tiger there that day. What are they going to do? Hey, man, Wacko Schmacko got a tiger yesterday. Oh, well. Yeah, I, still, I still got a L Wacko <laughs> Schmacko. Then on Wednesday, the Attorney General said it seized a tiger in Tecula in the same Pacific area, the same state, um, near the border of uh, Sinola, which oh. is home, yeah, home to the cartel of the same name. The office said it acted after receiving reports about a Bengal tiger that was wandering the streets and found that the animal was l- illegally being kept there. Wow. Be quiet, it might come close. There's videos on Instagram of this tiger. Wow. Authorities said the tiger's claws and fangs had been removed, and a man can later be seen in the video casually to- to- tossing a rope over the tiger's neck and leading him away. Oh it still doesn't matter, though. Like my friend Kevin, the veterinarian in Denver, he'll tell you, baby, even without claws or fangs, that tiger will eat you. <laughs> um, uh, so here's that now here's the nice thing they did for him his name was El Chango tributes pour in for El Chango the Mexican narco pet monkey shot dead they never had this in narcos they had the wild animals like the yeah. hippos and stuff but a raspy voice paired with the gentle strums of a guitar narrate the pain of the pain of a life cut short like other narco corridos, a genre of folk songs glorifying drug kingpins, the lyrics touch on a violent end. This was witness to how he was executed, the ballad proclaims. But unlike other narco corridos, this is a testament to the death of a tactical vest-wearing spider monkey in a custom camo jacket. The monkey, referred to as El Chango, or the primate in Spanish, was also known as the monkey was the pet member of the La Familia Micocana, a notorious cartel in Mexico. It and its apparent owner were killed on June 15th, or June 14th in the shootout. I like his name, Chango. Chango. Um, This family emerged in the 80s after splitting up from the Gulf Cartel, one of Mexico's oldest criminal uh, organizations. And then it's a history of that. We don't care about that. But here's what they did. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, they, it got out on social media, the picture. For some, it was a contrast of a cute monkey decked in narco attire. For others, it was an outrage that an endangered species was kept being kept as a pet. But mostly, it was a sense that an innocent being had been killed in a crossfire that promoted myriad tributes, newspaper front pages, and even a song. The ballad puts El Chango among the ranks of notable narcos, such as Sinola Cartel's uh, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman whose exploits have long been chronicled through music. It was such a short life, and it wasn't the monkey's turn to die, said the lyrics of the composition shared widely on Twitter. Someone stole his story because he came here to triumph and shine in so many things. Oh, oh, they wrote a song for him. He appears to be the first animal animal memorialized in a Norgorido. (laughs) 
Why can't I finish no, on that? Seth. Why? No. El Chango got a good send off. Poor little guy. He probably had a really exciting life. Come on. Those people are fun. They're drug lords, but they're fun. I mean, there's activity. It's better being stuck in some cage in the middle of Missouri. He's having a better life than Tonka. I can tell you that. I mean, in the if you're PETA wow. people, don't email me. I'm only kidding. I did think it was interesting, though. Can you imagine if you're the cops and this whole shootout goes on, and then you go over, you think you got the big guy, yeah. the main guy, and there's a monkey in a diaper and a bulletproof vest that's camo decorated laying on top. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's All it. Right. That's it. <laughs> you don't like it? No. Why? Because it's, it's not sad. Did you win at gambling? Let's see. We got this up. You can't close like that. It's awful. No. It's not awful. I don't, I don't have anything else for you. Did you win? Did you win again? Yes, I got four aces and a two. Yeah! Yeah, I did. I only played video poker one night. Then I played blackjack, but as we all know, I'm terrible at math. But the one dealer, um, I won everything, and then they switched dealers. It was, you can't find a table that's not a 15. They're all $15 minimums, mm -hmm. but which is stupid because then I just play 20 anyway. Yeah. Um, and so I don't want to was up like $200, and then they switched dealers, and the whole thing just went south super fast. Yeah. And then by the time the other lady, the good, the, the good lady, the angel dealer, came back, I was already like, well, I already lost $400. I guess I could start again, but nobody else wanted to. I know. I tried to trick more people. I met this guy, Rob, from California. He was fun. Um, uh, I played Wheel of Fortune a lot and lost my ass. I yeah. didn't get hardly any spins. They don't have the old school ones that I like. No, Got to go downtown for that. Um, During the day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Did you go to Margaritaville? I went to Margaritaville because they have that little deck on the second floor and you can see everybody on the strip, but it was closed again. Wow. I'm like, you know what? I did not bitch when this was closed during COVID. I get it. Maybe you don't have enough help. But we're back full speed. Right. And I said, can I just buy a beer and take it up there? No. Oh. Yeah. Not even allowed to stand up there. Maybe somebody jumped off. That's always my thought. Oh. Yeah, I always think, oh, there's probably an insurance thing. Somebody probably got drunk and jumped off or fell off. We'll re I'll yeah, research it. Yeah. Um, that's really all I got, termites. All right. So, um, happy Tuesday. Will the 4th of July be over by the time this is done? Yeah. It will? Yeah. Oh, God. How did it get to be July. I know it's still June, but um, oh, Lewis just texted me. He watched the special, my special. He loved it. Yeah. Well, it's not a finished product. It's just the first cut. I have to go watch it, which is always painful. I hate watching myself on TV. I'm always critical. And it doesn't matter. I've watched every video I've ever done. And some of them, I, you know, I think, well, I look fine in that one, but then I don't like the jokes. Or then I like the jokes, but I don't like the way I look. Or It's kind of brutal. But I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Um, all right, termites. Have a fun fourth. Don't shoot bottle rockets. Um, they can fire backwards. Yeah, they can. Or if you're going to have a bottle wa rocket war, make sure you have on long sleeves, even though it's hot, and gloves. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my dad would require if we were going to do it. What are you doing for the fourth? I am going to go to my friend Jeff's house. Yeah, and Debbie. Jeff and Debbie, or Jebby, as I like to call them. Because <laughs> Jeff goes all out. Mm -hmm. Jeff is, uh, he's, he buys a monster amount. Like there's a, like a merch truck that pulls up full <laughs> wow. of fireworks. And uh, he it's just, and now he's he has taken himself out of, the position of fire starter, mm -hmm. passed it on to his sons mm -hmm. and then their friends. But then me and him just sit and judge. <laughs> we just sit there like the old turtles in the balcony and judge their, um, we're like, mm, too long in between. Nope, nope, nope. And then a bunch will go off in a rope. That was too fast. Now you wasted some. We didn't even get to see the second one. We're just, just tiny little assholes in lawn chairs. They can't hear us, though, so it doesn't matter. Then when they're done, I just clap and go, that was a wonderful job. Um, so that's it. All right, termites. Be, um, be kind, termites. Celebratory. Celebratory? Fourth of July? Little shout out to Canada Day. 
careful. Canada Day July for all you Canadian termites on July 1st. I don't know how many Canadian termites are listening. And um, key lime pie M&Ms, if you're into it, I'll be throwing those out immediately. Or I'll save them for my mom. I'll take them over to my mom. She'll love them. Um, 